you took CTA. Really? It's five years already. Wow. <laughs> no wonder my last interview at Joy FM, they told me Majid does interviews every five years. Oh, they told you that? That's what they told me. I'm sure they watched it online. I didn't understand what they meant. <laughs> because that was the only interview you had and you went back into the fields uh, and, and began your your evangelism business. So, I mean, uh, we, we, we have followed that story. I mean, the story has gone far. And uh, this evening when I checked, it's, um, it's the highest viewed um, um, encounter uh, on, our, on our program so far. Oh, wow. I should tell you that the story you shared was personal and, 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 and people took it serious. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially comments that came from the youth, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and how how people are excited about the revolution that God is using you and your colleagues to, to bring together you know, people from the street onto the cross. So welcome again. We are just about to pick off after five years to discover what has transpired afterwards. Because remember what broke out in the Zoe Temple uh, with you. If I've been invited to places to speak, and I, I say this as, as a caution to anyone who's listening and to any congregation, any church, um, if let's say we have five speakers and you have a speaker before me and I get on the stage and I begin to speak, mm -hmm. there's been so many temptations where you put me in direct opposition to the previous speaker because I might say certain things that is not uh, consistent with the last speaker. And I want you to first of all understand that that is not the issue. That is not your focus. That is not the case. We come from different backgrounds. We have different points of views. Yeah. Yeah. We come from different disciplines. and. Um, after you observe, you realize that we are really different people, yeah. but we are finding means by which we can communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ into the world, the lordship and authority mm. of Jesus in the world. And um, 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 we might come with different messages, but nonetheless, we are all committed to that strategy. Okay. So um, radio is a very critical place to speak because you have diverse listeners listening. You have believers and non-believers, you know, and um, everything we say, um, we say from personal experiences, and it's up to you to believe it or not. Mm. And it's my point of view, it's my philosophy, it's my belief system you're about to listen to. And I'm not forcing you to believe it. And uh, I say say you hold your peace mm. if you listen and you ponder on what it is and mm. if you want to challenge I, I advise you to rather experiment than challenge whatever I'm going to tell you. Experiment? Experiment it challenge before it. a scientist okay. comes out with his results. <laughs> he goes through 1000 tests before finally He's confident to say that I have tried this, this I have mission. tested this, mm. I have done every experiment under the sun to come to this conclusion, to say that this thing works. Okay. So before you challenge anything I say, I suggest you go and try it first with all honesty. Mm. With all honesty. With all honesty. Inside the core of your being, with all sincerity, go and try what I'm saying. Then you can come back and challenge and say, I tried it with all honesty and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't tried it, do not challenge. Mm -hmm. And stop judging from afar. And it's been five years. There are certain things I probably preached five years ago, ago that I no longer preach. Mm -hmm. Because um, I've evolved um, in the knowledge of things concerning the kingdom of God. Yeah. And you know, whenever you have... Um, brand new born again Christians yeah. there's a certain fire that bends within us Extreme. we are unstoppable you yeah. know and, and in the cause of that we go through a lot of mistakes mm. and it's all it's not to regret you know mistakes in your past are not for you to regret you're supposed to interpret them properly maximize them and use them to serve other people mm. they're all classrooms they're all things that produce you 
to who you are now. So you shouldn't really regret. It should be a privilege that you made those mis mistakes because they're the very things that have produced who you are now. Okay. You know, and um, I really discovered that um, all through the, these years, we are very. Um, 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 it is very easy that we we use our culture, our tradition, and our perspective mm. to preach the gospel of Jesus, and it's very easy to do that. Um, in the early twenties, when radio began to be marketed on a large or a mass scale, radio, like radio, radio, this radio, yeah. you know, when when they started marketing it on a very mass scale, the church had great opportunity to use radio to proclaim the, uh, the, the gospel of Christ. But it took the church years to take advantage of, of it because the church was busy preaching that radio was a worldly instrument. True. true. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 And, and, and anybody who had a radio had an instrument of the devil. They quoted the verse that says, um, <laughs> they quoted the verse that said, um, Satan was a prince and power of the air. And so if you um, owned a radio, and since the radio was channeled through the air waves, mm. then obviously it was being controlled by the devil. Wow. And this was a tradition in the, in the communities that he believed in, believed in, had nothing to do with scripture. Mm. It was a point of view, views the perspective of the people. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> and um, using scripture to back their their claims, their claims, you know, you were disfellowshipped in many churches. You were put out as being in a backsliding condition. Mm. If you had a radio in your house, mm. same thing as t television. When television started being mass marketed, um, mm. most of the television stations were requesting for religious programming from the churches and the churches were unable to produce these things because same thing they said television was a device it's and evil. an instrument of the devil it's evil. <laughs> you know same as the man who had prepared for so many years you know to go and talk to the Maasai people on the plains of Kilimanjaro yeah. and then he got there and began to preach to them about their the devices of sin that you know uh, pornography and dirty movies you should stop watching them and reading them mm. and all his time on the plains of Kilimanjaro he was preaching to these Maasai people only to realize that they were not responding back at him <laughs> why because um, he soon discovered that the Maasai people had no idea what the pornographic magazine was, was about. and they didn't even have access to movies so they've never seen a pornographic movies in their lives. And so what are you talking about? Exactly what are you talking about? Because he had been oriented and trained in his perspective yeah. about um, his culture. Because where he was coming from, these things it's were so available for them. It was common. Only to rather go and put this thing in their heads. In other words, uh, therefore the Messiah people never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Because he was busy preaching his culture. And I believe we do that a lot. I have observed it coming into um, the, the, the fray of um, the, the Christian faith and during encounters with people. I have observed that this is a big virus amongst us. And, um, Even in Ghana? Worldwide. 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 If, if you're from India, they preach the Indian culture to you. Mm. You think, and, and, they, and they, they tie it to the word of God, mm. but it's not. Matter of fact, is is your tradition that Jesus came to do away is your culture. The root word of the word culture is the word cult, and um, um, a cult is not necessarily a secret brotherhood or some evil thing. You know, is what develops into what becomes a culture, okay. and Jesus is. First public statement in Matthew 4 17 is uh, repent, change your mind, get away from your traditions, get away from what you already know. I'm trying to destroy your mindset because a new mind mindset is available. You know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the first thing he attacked was your tradition and your culture. But it's very difficult, even for the Pharisees.
So would you say, um, if, but what you're saying, judging from what you're saying, that culture plays a big role in the plan of salvation? Plays a very, very big role. I'm not saying we should do away with it, but uh, we must, culture is, is what distinguishes us from each other. Culture is what, you know, makes people identify with where you are from and who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. But there's a higher authority at that play. Is above your culture. That is above your culture. That is the culture of the kingdom. So of God. most of the time you need to play low on what you know and infiltrate your mind on what is above you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And what what you're reading and what you're listening to and what you're feeding yourself with mm. Mm. naturally becomes your culture. I mean if you listen to Kanye West and Jay Z, them talk, you hear them talking about the culture. Mm. And hip hop is the culture mm. in the black communities in America. So, um, the culture is um, who you have become, mm. basically, your philosophy. Okay. And uh, a philosophy is what Jesus introduced that's the kingdom of God. Okay. You know, that um, your will be done. Okay. Your will be done, not in heaven, your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. In other words, Jesus is saying that mm. there is a certain way it is in heaven and that way should be on earth. And um, when you say the glory of God, you know, glory has like five strokes to it. Glory means actually, um, in basic terms, glory means culture. Mm. Yeah. Glory means the lifestyle or the culture. Mm. The culture of God. You know, and the... Uh, all men have sinned and come short of the glory, have come yeah. short of the culture of God, okay. sort of who God is and, and, and what He wants us to be. Interesting. Folks, if you've just uh, tuned in, this this is Hit 1039 FM. This is Gospel. My name is Frankie Five. I'm here with Majid Michel and qualify it, Reverend Majid Michel. No, 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 no. no. When we put titles on ourselves, yeah. And you see, there's, there's always there's always a temptation, mm -hmm. okay, to reveal your your weakness. You know, now you have people that that get out of the faith because they say, ah, but that pastor, I thought he was, I thought he was, and then the titles make them believe that you are pure and holy without blemish and mistake, mm. that you are unable to make a mistake. You cannot make a mistake. And then when you put this reverend and right reverend and 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 the most holy, the most holy, the most the most reverend, you know, you know, sort of taxi driver on the road and you say, wow, look, that's why I'm not even a Christian. From the University of Ghana campus now, we feel the presence of God in evangelism. We have to be careful with evangelism. <coughs> we have been bound and afflicted by something called evangelism. Because evangelism tells you that um, Jesus is coming today. Maybe tonight. So get out there and win souls fast. Otherwise, if you don't, these people's blood will be on your hands. And instead of us Christians to build a community of people, that reflect the very lifestyle of Jesus Christ or the kingdom of heaven on earth. Evangelism comes to take that place, to say, hurry up and go save people. And you have new born again Christians that have been sent into the world to go win souls. This is wrong. Um, you don't do that. If you have a new born baby, yeah and you bring them to the house the first time. Yeah. You don't tell them that your diapers are in the co are in the well, this part, go pick them yourself. You don't tell them the food is in the kitchen, go fix it yourself. You don't tell them, you know, anytime you want to change yourself, you know, I've done this, I've done that, so I'm going to go to work whenever you are ready. You can do this by yourself. The, the child needs parents because the child does not have the ability to do that by himself. Mm. And then when the child begins to grow, you, you keep, you, the parent keeps guiding the child, teaching them how to sit, keep their back straight, how to walk. When they take a step, they fall down, you carry them, kiss them, kiss where they hurt themselves, you know. When they, when they hurt themselves without you being there, you rush them to the hospital, you, you, you do x-rays, you check them, you love them, 
you encourage them, you teach them, you discipline them, you love them, you encourage them, you discipline them. But what we do is when we have born again Christians, they are no different than newborn babies. What we do is we let them loose into the jungle. Hmm. Immediately they get into the church, we don't do nothing to them. And then we give them handouts and teach them how to tell another person about Jesus. And how to tell another person you're going to hell if you don't accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that becomes the witness that you're a Christian. You see, what Christians have done is that because it is too difficult to go through the everyday lifestyle of waiting on people, of lifting the downtrodden, of sharing love between each other, of living a lifestyle that reflects the kingdom of heaven on earth. It's too difficult to go through the meeting greety of that Jesus Christ lifestyle that if you insult me, I should overlook you. I have to insult you back. That if you hit me with a wicked fist, I have to hit you back. You know, that lifestyle of building a community that reflects the order of heaven on earth is too difficult for us. So it is easier for us to say, get a sticker, put it on the bumper of your car, say Jesus saves, get a handout, God is the answer, and share it to people. And from time to time, these are the things, put this thing on your lapel, this thing when you're going for this program. And then these, these buttons we put on ourselves and the stickers on our car bumpers, honk if you love Jesus, blow your horn if you love Jesus. Now these things become our witness, not, not our lifestyle. So for you to tell me you're a Christian, the only way I know you're a Christian is because you're called Reverend Frankie. Mm -hmm. And that becomes your witness. The only way they know Majid is Christian is because he's called Evangelist Majid. And that becomes my witness, not my lifestyle. Okay. And this is wrong. And evangelism has caused a lot of problems than rather soft problems because the world have swallowed a lot of new born again people back into the world because they were not nurtured, they were not trained, there were no parents around them. We just brought them to Christ, say this after me and believe in your heart, and then after they did, we send them into Told the them. world. This is very intriguing. I mean, I haven't had anyone underscore this, but uh, uh, you've really underpinned it in a very nice way. We just need one or two um, stories out of, I mean, it's been, like I said, it's been five years since we, we met you here, and we know that you have been on it day after day, week after week, month after month. You have some experiences you want to share with us. I, I, I don't let the stories carry you away. I mean, we, we've made blind eyes see. I don't know if Timothy told you that. Tim? Yes. Okay. We've prayed for people and they've been healed. We've done so many mighty miracles. But you see, the people, Jesus called a couple of people into judgment and said, Lord, we raised the dead in your name. We did mighty miracles in your name. He healed the sick in your name. And what was Jesus' response? These were stories they were telling Jesus. Jesus says, you workers, you workers of iniquity, depart from me. Why? You see, because when I was hungry, you gave me no food. Hmm. When I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. When I was naked, you gave me no clothes. When I was in prison, you didn't come and visit me. They said, Lord, tell us, when were you hungry and we didn't give you food? When were you thirsty and we didn't give you water? When were you naked and we didn't give you clothes? Yeah, Lord, we've been with you all this week. Lord, if we saw you in that state, we yeah. would have helped you. Yeah. And then Jesus points to everybody and says, As you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. So why did Jesus ignore the miracles they did in his name? And why did Jesus ignore the mighty miracles they did in his name? Why did Jesus ignore the blind eyes I saw in their name? Because you see, don't get too carried away with the stories. You see, get, get carried away with the core and the depths of God. Mm. Because you see, the reason for the study of the word of God is not simply to be able to boast that I know some scripture. You see, the whole reason for the objective scholarly study of scripture is so that I will be able to get the mind of God, to get God's viewpoint, mm. to get God's perspective, and then to do it. I've done so many crusades, so many witnesses out there. We just don't say them too many times. We've done so many healings for in people that couldn't walk, that walking out, that couldn't see us now. And well, somebody you say, but you see, these are the things you have to put out there, these are the things you have to make people see and hear because this will boost people's faith. But you see. The Israelites saw Jesus do these things. 
But right now, they don't believe that Dambak was the Messiah. They don't believe he, he, he rules. But they saw these things firsthand. You, you see, some of the words can be thrown on hard ground, some on soft ground. And you see, the first rule of evangelism, first of all, let me tell you, uh, Jesus, first of all, has to be revealed to you personally, and then you can actually market him properly. And you, you, because these people we're sending out, they really don't even understand the depths of scripture. They don't even understand the depths of God himself. They haven't encountered Jesus. They haven't seen Jesus. They believe, yes, but they haven't had... If you ask them, what has Jesus done for you, they can't tell you anything. You see, but you see, before I can sell this water to you, I, I should taste the water. I should understand the water. I should be able to... The, I, I should know every single thing about this water. Believe in the water before I market it to you properly from my heart. But if I haven't tasted the product, I haven't experienced the product, yeah. I haven't had a first encounter with this product, how do I market it to you? Right. Truthfully, truthfully, from the core of my being, I won't be able to sell you a product I haven't experienced. Mm. You see, Jesus is like a product. You see, how much have you experienced him? How much have you seen his power? How much have you known him for you to come and tell mm me about him. Mm -hmm. You see, the first rule of evangelism, first of all, is that I must win you to me first. For you to be able to get me to listen to you, I have to win your interest to me. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, you will listen to everything like I Jesus have to did. tell you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To the multitudes. Right. Yeah. Nice. But um, there are quite a number of people who are sending me messages on Facebook. It is very difficult to hear you. The, the last five years you were here, you said you were going to do some perform some surgery, no, and I never told you, you didn't say that. Frank, oh, you you or you said you went to do. I never. You never. I've did. never done surgery. You've not done surgery of your throat. It was news that came out that it I was news. You were clearing that. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, yeah. I think it was even we did the interview before that news came out. Okay. That news came out not too long ago, maybe two years ago, okay. or three years ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, when I was on your show, I never talked about surgery. You didn't say surgery. Yeah, it was some news that came out that I want to do surgery on my voice, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's a lie. Okay. You guys be careful what you read. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. um, what has been the, um, the improvement? Has there been any improvement so far? Absolutely. Your absolutely. 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 Are you, I mean, are you looking I forward? wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Am I well? Are you looking forward to speaking clearly someday? Um... Um, I, it's not my focus. I mean, I'm still doing movies and yeah, in the radio station, you know. And where is your focus? If, if there's a challenge, you know, you don't focus on a challenge, you know. Good. Mm. Then, then you feed it. Mm. When you focus on a challenge, you feed the challenge, and then you, the challenge keeps growing. Mm. You know, you override it. You, you just go ahead and do what you have to do. You know, where is your focus? What are you feeding? What are you feeding? What are you feeding? What are you feeding? So you're still shooting movies? On the 14th of February, we have a premiere. Yeah, I saw one a few weeks ago at Silverbeck. You were there with Martha uh, and, and some few. That's Martha's movie. movie? That was Martha's movie. Yeah, that was Martha's movie. And, and you, you, you casted? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, you went to support. I went to support? Yeah. Okay. Well, my, Yvonne, Yvonne and I have a new movie coming out on um, Val's Day. Val's Day. What was the title? The men we love. The men we love. Yeah. <laughs> is a pastor, a politician, and a married man. And what is happening in the individual houses? Ah, I can imagine. Yeah. The pastor's house, the politician's so house. So who plays a pastor? Majid Michel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Watch all my old films. I mean, everybody who knows me knows me. But, um, every time I shout, my voice breaks. Watch, watch my movies. You see it in all my movies. Ever yeah. since, ever since, ever mm. since. Mm. You know, yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice. You have been um, graced enough mm. to know the truth. Mm. What do you think someone who does not know anything about Christ and is a celebrity do to control the spirit of addiction in any form or way, be it narcotics or anything any vice all right um, yeah. um any any form of addiction first of all please stop focusing on my voice and listen to what i'm saying okay else you miss it 
not you, Frankie. I understand you. I mean, they, they are listening to you, so they, they, for me, I can hear you clearly. Every form of addiction, whatever, whatever department you you you, you are suffering it from, mm -hmm. is first of all an appetite. An appetite. What is an appetite? When you're hungry, and I give you food. After you eat the food, you get satisfied. After you get satisfied, will you be satisfied forever? Are you going to go for the rest of your life without eating again? You have to eat no. to survive. In a couple of hours, you will be what? Yeah. Hungry again. You will be hungry again if you are thirsty. And I give you water to drink. Yeah. After you drink it, you satisfy your thirst. After that, after that thirst is satisfied, in a couple of hours, you will be what? Thirsty, thirsty again. And what do you have to do? You have to satisfy it again. Until the day you die, your appetite will keep coming. You'll keep satisfying it. It will come back. You satisfy it. It will go away. It will come back. You will satisfy it until the day you die. Sex is an appetite. Sex mm. is no different from eating or drinking. Mm. If you feel for sex right now, and you ask, and, 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 and I gave you a partner to satisfy you sexually, yeah. you will be satisfied. Mm. And you wouldn't want sex in the next two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Because the appetite is what? Gone. Mm. You have satisfied the appetite. But let me give you a couple of hours or a couple of days. The same appetite will come back. That will require you to satisfy it again. Mm. Sex is an appetite. But the thing is, when an appetite is starved, when you do not feed an appetite, it eventually dies. If you're doing a three-day fast, on the second day you think you're going to die. It's <laughs> happened to you before. Oh, so many times. <laughs> the, 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 the shorter the fast, yeah. the more difficult. The longer the fast, mm -hmm. the easier it is. If you're doing a 40-day fast, ask my wife, she'll tell you, if I'm talking about fast, I'm not talking six to six. I'm talking 24 hours of food. Six to six is not fast to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing, I'm doing a dry fast. No, no, no. I don't see that thing as fast. When I fast, when I'm doing a fast, yeah. you see, if you, you fast because food is an appetite. And you need food. All of us, everybody in this room, everybody in this room is, a, is, a, is an addict to food. Since you were born, they introduce you to food. With the feeding bottle, when you were growing up, they gave you this, they gave you milk, then you started eating rice, started eating this, and you started eating all kinds of food. So since you were a child, you, you have been fed with food, and now you are a junkie to food. You are a junkie. Mm. So when you're hungry, it's, you're not really hungry. It's, it's cold turkey. It's withdrawal symptoms you're having. It's like a drug addict who's been so used to a drug when you take the drug away from him, he has cold turkey with neural symptoms. He needs the drug. Food is like a drug to all human beings here right now. Mm. So when I take food away from you, you feel like you're hungry. You're not hungry. It's gastric juice that's eating your stomach walls. So now, when you do not feed the gastric juices for like maybe 14 days, they stop producing. And only people who have done long fast will understand me. If you haven't done a long, a 40 day fast, you'll understand me. If you're doing a 40 day fast and you get to maybe day 25, getting to 40 is automatic. It's easy. You see, 40 days is a fast. After 40 days, it's called starvation. Mm. Because then the body, the, the body will start eating on the muscle. Mm. But before that, every man can go 40 days without eating. And he will live. You will not die for 40 days. That's a fast. Now, that fast for 40 days is way easier to make. Why? Because it's a longer fast. Because you have stopped feeding the appetite. You have stopped feeding the need to eat. If you feel for sex today and you are addict 
of sex. When that feeling comes, do not feed it. Don't satisfy it. Do not get, do not get to a climax of it. If you get to a climax, you feel, you feel you've satisfied the appetite. I assure you the next day the feeling will completely be gone. It will be gone completely. Mm. But it will return. Don't feel it again a second time. When you don't, the feeling will completely go away. You will not even want to see anything sexual in your life. So it is with every other appe Aspects appetite. Okay. Addiction is appetite. Okay. And any addiction is appetite. You see, I, I, I don't drink because alcohol is sweet. I drink because of the feeling it gives me. I don't do drugs because doing the drug is nice. I do it because of the euphoric feeling I feel after I've done it. Mm. So you're not really addicted to the alcohol. You're not really addicted to the smoke. You are addicted to the feeling it gives you. That is what you're addicted to. That's what the Bible says. To not be drunk in wine wearing in excess. And be filled rather with the spirit. You see, it is clearly known that you see when you see a drunk man doing something, that is how the Holy Spirit will make you feel. And then when it, on the day of Pentecost, people thought these people were drunk. Yeah. Why would you think a man is drunk? Because of the way he behaves. Yeah. So some people can be really praising God, lying on the floor, shouting and jumping. You think they are drunk. But it's really the spirit they are filled with. Okay. Mm. So my question to you is, you see, the most testimonies of Christians are, oh, ever since I saw Jesus Christ, I've stopped drinking, I've stopped smoking. And that is their testimony. Well, that is really not a test. That's that, that the lowest form of testimony for any Christian. Now that you have stopped drinking, what are you doing in place of drinking? What are you replacing it? Or what are you replacing it to? Because it's the same as a fast. Yeah. You say, oh, I'm not eating today. You see, when you are not eating, what are you replacing that time with? That time of not eating must be replaced with reading the scripture and praying and getting to know the Father. You see, you see, it takes a very long time to prepare food. You have to think about what you're going to eat. You have to go to the market and buy it. You have to bring it to the house. You have to start preparing it. You have to cut the ingredients. You have to put it on the fire. It has to cook for about 30 minutes. You have to bring it out. You have to serve it. You have to cool it down before you start eating. It takes a lot of time to eat. Frankie, all that time, you say, I am not going to do this thing. So what do I do with that time? I'm giving it to God. God is so excited. Say, Frankie, every time you're doing your breakfast, you're preparing your breakfast, you don't think about me, you're not praying to me, you're not talking to me. Now that you have replaced re you, now that you have taken that time off to say that I am not going to eat, yeah. I am so happy you have time with me now. So if, but if you are not eating, yeah. and you are, you're also just sitting, you are also just sitting there, and you say I'm fasting, it's useless. It's useless. All I'm saying is that okay. any form of addiction, first of all, that you're struggling with, starve the addiction. Starve the addiction. Do not feed the addiction. Do not feed. You, you need to replace that time with something else. I have a lot of them. I, I talk to a lot of people in the DM, whatever. Whenever... And it's funny, they tell you when they're reading the Bible is when is, is when crazy the, things, is come, when to things come to mind. Yeah. <laughs> yes. At that particular time. You see, it's fine. Let, let, let it come, you see. If it comes, you can't control it. Mm. But how do you respond to it? Frankie, you, you can't stop me from insulting you. Mm. I can insult you right now if I want. How you respond to me is how you are judged. True. Yeah. True. You can't stop people from doing anything to True. you. True. But the reaction I'll give, that's the reaction. people will read, ah, this guy. And the reaction. I thought he was. And the, and the reaction yeah. and the reaction you will give is also what tells me where you stand. Okay. Your, your perspective, where you stand mm. in the kingdom of God. Mm. You know, so whenever these things come to your mind, mm. don't feed them. Starve them. Starve them. Nice one. Don't say it's difficult. Don't, nice don't say it's difficult. Nice Just do not do it. Starve the addiction. Yes. Uh, our sister Moisha went through a phase. People considered it, gave it all sorts of names. I mean, um, she's your colleague. Um, others said it was spiritual. 
and then said it was all forms of tags and headlines. Were you able to reach out to her? And what were the things that you told her? No, no. I haven't spoken to Moshe ever since. I've sent her messages. I can show you right now my phone. She never responded. She never replied back. And, um, really? Yeah, I sent her she WhatsApp. She doesn't know your number. I, I, I sent her WhatsApp messages and, and, and um, Instagram direct messages oh, as well. Instagram. And I told her I wanted to, I wanted to come see her. But she never replied. And I reached out to a couple of people, you know, to, to ask. But still, I never got to see her. And, and, and I'd rather not judge from afar. I've learned not to do that. You know, you, you can't sit back and look at what's going on far away from Moshe and say, Oh, Moshe has done this. Oh, Moshe has gone spiritual. Oh, Moshe is going to go crazy because she's. Who told you? That's why I reached out myself because I needed to hear from herself what exactly was going on before you can, you know, diagnose mm. whatever it is. Are you disappointed not hearing from her? Yeah. Are you disappointed uh, not hearing from her? Um, no, no, no. I'm not disappointed not hearing from her. Um, it's, she probably has. She probably honestly haven't even seen it. You know, and um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, yes, um, you, you know. But um, God is good. So what, what, what do we have to do when that happens? You see, we you pray for them. That's what you do. Okay. Are, are you looking forward to compiling movies solely targeted towards preaching the gospel to people? You see, um, it, it must be done in such a tasteful manner. In fact, if I took you to a country where it was illegal to preach, yeah. okay, I took you to a country where it was illegal to preach, yeah. or if you say, for God so love the Lord that again, it's already got inside, you'll be put in jail mm. for mentioning the name of Jesus mm. or, for, or for quoting scripture. Yeah. Let's, let's say John 3.16. Um, and I took you to a country where you cannot call John 3 16. Mm. How will you how will you deliver a message to an unbeliever without quoting the scripture? This is what every Christian must be able to do. Where you understand scripture so well mm. that you have that you have harnessed or you have you, you have drawn out the very essence and the meaning of that scripture, the true understanding. Okay, yeah. the meaning between the lines of the scripture, you have drawn it out of the scripture, you understand the meaning of what it is, mm. and I can tell it to you without quoting it, mm. and you will get the true meaning of what the scripture was trying to say. These are the kind of movies we should be doing. Okay. Where it's not blatantly in the face that I am preaching to you the gospel of Jesus Christ because you have people who reject it. Okay. How can I infiltrate your mind without telling you it is Jesus? Okay. How can I infiltrate your mind without quoting it blatantly to your face that this is what I'm making you know? So the question is who who is the target? Who is the viewer you want to do it? I would like to do it for eight years. I like to do it for people who are not believers, not to Christians. Christians are already saved. You see, frankly, sometimes when I go to church, I mean, yeah, people need encouragement and all that. Listen to me. The only sin that takes you to hell is rejection of the Christ. Have you honestly received, have you honestly believed in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and confessed with your mouth? Have you honestly done that? If you have, you are saved. Now, I, do, I really don't like preaching to people that are already saved. I'm just taking a light to where there's already light. I don't like taking a light to where there's already light. I like taking the light to where it's dark. Majid likes taking the light to where there's dark. He doesn't want to stay in his comfort zone. <laughs> so this is the second time he's been on the show. It's been interesting. The comments are so many. I'm sorry, my time is up, so I'm unable to read all the comments. That's bad. Uh, so, uh, if you're Papa B, thank you so much. He says, I've been listening to you and I'm touched. Yeah. Stop talking about the problem. Let me say the solutions. Don't waste the time. And stop telling churches that they, they, they need... People need space to sit and to listen to the Word of God. Yeah. The space you're also using on the radio station. Yeah. Tell us the tell us tell us the business we should do than rather telling us that why are you converting factories to churches. 
Use that space because that space is also space for you to educate us. Nice one. And that's 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 how he lives here. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show, my Z. I love you, Frank. I, I love you more, my God. brother. I love you more. God bless you. Man, all. it's been an excellent and an exciting time with Majid Michel. Let's continue this discussion on the internet and, and find solutions and stop the blame games. It's time to prepare for the one who is supposed to come to come. Jesus is coming and he's not going to be silent. Get to know him now. Get to know him now. I present to you, Jesus. My name is Frankie Five. I did this with uh, Gabby Angels, Lady Thez, Mario B, and Derek. And next week, we come your way again with another exciting edition of This is Gospel. And I leave you in the hands of King Lagazi. He takes you from now to the hour of 10. So, don't touch the dial. This is it. We mean entertainment, and we mean gospel.